Jeff Farmer is a champion Barbados swimmer and I'm hoping he's my ticket to a Caribbean fish, either from above the water or below it. On the first day of my trip to Barbados, he takes a group of journalists out turtle watching. We anchor up and Jeff shows he can fish for turtles with fish in his hand. A day later and conditions change. Storms on the eastern seaboard of the United States create a swell that reaches the island two days later. So somewhere out there is a fish with Jeff's name on it. Well, we're going to go and try our luck catching some wahoo first. And maybe try an hour at that and then we'll go up to a lobster area and try and get a couple of lobsters. Maybe we'll have a, a hand at uh, jigging a barracuda as well. We start with the kingfish fishing. A really good day looks like this. As Jeff's friend and boat captain William sets up, that's what we're hoping for. Would you like to select one of the pretty ones? Which one would you like to select? I think we'll have a, uh, what's, what's the national colours of Barbados? Blue and gold. I don't have a blue and gold. That's the closest. That's the closest. Okay. Half an hour in and we're on. It's a big fish and William needs the belt. When I whine in, it's not me who whine in. It's the rhythm totally in control. When I trip in. Within a couple of minutes though, this happens. All William has to show for it is a burnt thumb from trying to slow down the braided line. A minute later and he's in again. We have another few goes in the same spot. We see fish but they are flying fish. Cutting our losses we head from 250 feet to 100 feet, slow the boat down from 7 to 4 knots and start fishing for barracuda. Then this comes in from a boat that's moved to exactly where we were a few minutes ago. Yeah, just, yeah, he's still out there, one can fish and uh, see what I put it on board. I can't believe that. Anyway, good. I'll see you later, Thank you very much. Over. You said you are, you do it. Yeah, allow me one. Those kingfish are having a laugh, as are the barracuda. We move from trolling to jigging. Wow. Okay, just Talk me through the difference between jigging a barracuda and this new fishing for wahoo kingfish. I think I'd better let William explain that one. He's a more a fisherman than I am. Um, jigging is something that's only started in Barbados recently. It's, I think it's originally a Japanese way of fishing. And you let down this fairly heavy, let, heavy weighted lure. And you try to go to the bottom, maybe 100, 200 feet. And then you pull the rod up really fast and it looks like a, a fish that's wounded. Uh, it's, it's only started in Barbados a little while and some people have had a lot of luck. I've had a little bit of luck, but it's hard work. Your arm really hurts. Nothing doing. Okay, last chance. Let's get championship swimmer Jeff into the water and see what he can catch with a spear. You can recognize uh, the habitat from the surface. You need a, basically you need a, either a reef with a ledge under it or you need a, a good sized rock that has a hollow under, under the rock, where it's a perfect home for a lobster to keep away from the predators. I would say anywhere between 20 and 30 feet. Yeah, sometimes we can catch them um, in a shallower water. Hopefully we'll find that spot today. Well, that's not what happens. This is what five feet looks like. This is what 15 feet looks like. Here you're not gonna find any lobster. No. If you found a chub like that, I could have speared, but it doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Pounder, but it doesn't make sense. It's just the wrong day, unfortunately. <laughs> I have a bit of a soft spot for reef fish, uh, more so than that for wahoo, ocean going fish, and barracuda. Uh, chub are, are very territorial fish, and um, I don't really like shooting them, to be honest. But if I do come across a, a five and a half, six pounder, I might be tempted to take it. Well, <clears throat> in spear fishing, there are multiple um, tools you can use. Um, the traditional tool in Barbados is a, what we call a grain. It's basically a spear um, with a, a single prong on it, like this. Um, that's the traditional fishing um, grain. Then there's a lobster gun, which basically is the spear in a gun, like this. This is a, a lobster gun. It's small, basically, which means it's, it's easily maneuverable um, in caves that you're going to to find the lobsters. 
I prefer this tool um, than the spear gun. This is a, a pole spear or a Hawaiian sling. This one is, it's, uh, can be broken down into three for traveling. It's a, a smaller size. And the, the tip of this one is what called a paralyzing um, head. And if you shoot a fish or, or a lobster, they say it cannot spin on a spear. So it keeps it in one position. Now here's the plug for the sponsoring company that flew me out there. Port Ferdinand is the only development of its kind in Barbados where you can get an apartment with its own berth for a motorboat. And it is specifically aimed at people who fish. That gentleman had no interest at that time in fishing. He bought his home purely for a place in the sun in Barbados, somewhere to lock up and leave, go home, come back, his beautiful little spot. And after about six months of owning and going on a few boating trips with neighboring friends, he bought his own little fishing boat and the last time I had lunch with him, he is an avid fisher, fisherman and he's out every morning catching fish off of the local banks in Barbados. If you have between 2 million and 7 million US dollars to spend on your own fishing hideaway then, of all the luxury fishing resorts I have visited in the world, this has to be on your shortlist. If you want to buy a big game fishing property at Port Ferdinand, visit portferdinand.com. There's a lot more to Barbados than Rihanna. And with that in mind, I have to say a big thank you for our fabulous Bajan music to new Biggie Erie.